Hello again. Um, this is just another one of our videos uh, of part of our series about what to expect in upcoming work uh, in the residential red zone. I've got Brendan Winder with me today from uh, operations team at SERA uh, and he's just going to talk to us later on about some of the things you'll expect to find during uh, our work in this, this area. So as we talked about before, we're going to clear properties in, in a two-phase manner. First phase is going to be about uh, removing the buildings, the, st the built structures, so the garages and the houses, and then we'll move on to a second phase. So the second phase of our work will be um, once the built structures are gone, so again that's the houses and the garages, there'll be a period of time before phase two starts, after phase one is completed, and then we'll come back once an area is totally um, cleared of, of the built houses and, and garages, then we'll come back and take away the fences, the patios, the driveways, um, and clotheslines, anything that's still there uh, to clear the area off. Some of the trees will remain, um, some of the large street trees will remain until we actually work out what we're going to do long term with, with the land. So Brendan, can you just tell us what people can expect uh, as we commence phase one of the work? So right, there'll be uh, Sarah property inspectors around and they'll be carrying their ID with them of course. Mm. Uh, we expect there'll be a number of contractors working uh, in the area as well and they'll be on each property um, going about their work. There'll be some heavy traffic movement at the same time and uh, we expect that to be um, uh, difficult uh, for some days as we're trying to get sure. through the properties. We expect there to be some noise, uh, some dust and um, some other issues that you'd normally associate with a work site anywhere else in the country. Right, right. And is Sarah just doing this work or others involved as well? No, there will be the insurance companies as well and uh, we're programming our work to tie in with them. Um, depending on the circumstances, we'll be working uh, directly with them or they may have their own operations uh, being conducted. But a lot of our work will be tied in with those guys so that uh, we both understand the nature of the work. So Brendan, you talked about dust a few moments ago. What are some practical things that people can do um, to prevent dust affecting them, them any more than it needs to? Uh, there will be some opportunities to use water to suppress dusting area. Although, um, as we all know, living in Christchurch, the North West uh, will pick up um, dust and spread it around. And the contractors will do their best to avoid that, but there's going to be some days where it will be dusty, unfortunately. Yeah, so people should perhaps, though, if they do have to be at home, shut the windows, keep inside if there's activity around them? Yeah, the common sense stuff. Um, keep the dust out of your house as much as you can. Um, keep your kids out of it as much as you can. Um, close the windows and doors. And just take care of yourself as you would normally. Sure. Now, now one of the issues that's come through the community meetings that, that um, have been held is, is asbestos. Uh, and, and people are concerned about the effect of, that asbestos may have on them and their, their ongoing health. Now, now we know that it's not a Sarah issue, that's a Department of Labour issue, but what, what are, tell us about how asbestos is going to be dealt with if it, in fact it's found in, in the um, clearance process. Right, so the accredited contractors, the ones that we've um, engaged to do this work, have a hazard identification process that they'll go through. They'll know when they're dealing with asbestos and when they are, they'll get the trained uh, contractors in to take care of it. So they'll contain it. Um, they'll package it and they'll get it out to the landfill so there'll be no asbestos um, leaking from any properties out into the uh, community environment. Um, we understand the concerns around asbestos but um, we've done a lot of work with the Department of Labour and the contractors and we're really confident we've got a good uh, process in place which will mean asbestos is not going to become a hazard issue for anyone nearby. Okay well that's, that's good news isn't it. Now you talked before about um, traffic. Some, it's just some tips that people can get around traffic, There's obviously a lot, a lot of movements, there'll be signage, what, what can we tell people about traffic? Yeah, it's, it's going to be very busy, so uh, we expect um, over that period of time there'll be a lot of heavy traffic movements, so um, large trucks um, carrying um, debris from these land clearances, so we can expect a bit of dust, um, we can expect to be slowed through that area, we can expect to see signs um, and there will be delays. So if you can avoid that area, that would be the best way to approach it. Other than that, uh, take it easy and, and drive the conditions. All right, so the real, the real, real message is, is um, drive slowly, be careful and, and be cautious and just watch what's around here. Absolutely. During the property clearance um, process, Brandon, obviously the, the services for properties are going to have to be um, capped or um, severed, however we like to describe it. So that's things like electricity and water and sewer and, and perhaps your phone line. Um, if people experience difficulty with these things as, as the activity is going on, how best would they deal with that? What people should do is just go directly to the company that they normally deal with, uh, sure. the power company, the, um, 
the city council or, um, or the telecommunications provider that they use. They'll have a 24-hour uh, customer service number. They should just contact them directly as they would normally and they should be able to get those answers direct from those guys. Okay, so Brendan, what, one of the, the areas that we are concerned about is for safety of, of people that are still living in the residential red zones as this um, phase one and phase two work is underway, uh, particularly children. Uh, we want to make sure that they are as safe as possible. So what are some of the things that, that parents and, and caregivers can um, advise their children of, to, to be cautious of and to take care of? I think the number one thing to be aware of is um, they should supervise the kids. There's going to be a number of hazards um, around the houses that are getting cleared and the properties that are being cleared. So keep an eye on the kids. So really the message is, is if there's fences and signage up, just remind, remind your children just to, um, to not go through the fences or get too curious and jump, jump around machinery and, and get too um, involved with that, just but be cautious and, and stay clear of those things. Sure, yeah, they're, they're not playgrounds and, and um, we just need to be aware that some of the heavy machinery and the hazards on these work sites are pretty significant and uh, these kids could get themselves into a spot of bother if they get on there, so if we keep them out, we can keep them safe. Great. So Brendan, another thing that's come up as a result, you know, during the community meetings that, that um, we've been to is just the issue around security of, of people's property and also fire risk and, um, and the potential for fires and um, security issues during the, 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 um, the clearance process. Uh, can you just tell us about what steps we've taken to address some of those concerns? So Warwick, nothing changes. Uh, we've been in contact with emergency services for a number of months now about uh, what's going on in the residential red zone and um, their role out here really doesn't change. Security will stay with the police and uh, 111 is still the number to call if you spot anything uh, criminal or dangerous. Uh, the fire service will have some work to do out here around the vegetation that gets left behind and they'll be assessing the fire risk the whole way through it. But um, nothing really changes from an emergency point of view. If you see something uh, that you don't understand um, or suspect has some sort of dangerous element to it, call 111 and uh, they'll respond as they would normally. Thanks for that, Brendan. Folks, I hope um, these videos are helping you as, as you prepare to move on uh, into your future life outside of the residential red zone. We're very, very concerned that uh, we do as much as we can to, to make your life as easy as possible as you move on. If you do have further questions, um, please give us a call on 0800 Ring Sarah. Perhaps have a look at our website or come along to our community meetings we'll be holding.